It's time for the Taco Truck Roundup, the best show on the internet when you just want to get caught up with what's new at AppSumo. Throughout the week, I publish full-length reviews of many of the deals that appear on AppSumo. On Tuesdays, I do something a little bit different and summarize the last week's worth of products. So if you don't have time to watch a 20, 30, or 40-minute review on an email marketing tool, well, you're in the right spot because we're going to get through all of the last week's tools and hopefully right around 10 minutes. We're going to kick things off with a screen capture and screen sharing tool called Instacap that I reviewed just last week. So Instacap is a Chrome extension that allows you to capture, annotate, and share screenshots. It has three main features. You can do a free selection, a screen capture of whatever is visible on the screen, and also a scrolling capture so you can capture an entire web page with just a single click. I thought that was a pretty nice feature. Now, once your screen capture is done, there are some annotation tools so you can go ahead and mark up the screenshot. And I think most importantly, there's collaboration features so you can collaborate with people in your team or just get a general link that you can share with anyone. They'll be able to open up the link and then add feedback right to that screenshot. Now, it doesn't have to be a screenshot. You can also upload your own files directly to Instacap, making this a pretty decent option for doing things like getting client feedback for maybe your latest website design. The strength of Instacap is honestly its nice looking design. That's also a drawback because it's very opinionated in its design. There's very strong and bold colors throughout. And if you don't like those, chances are you're probably not going to enjoy using the platform. There are a few UI quirks. This is obviously a very new tool, and it's also, like I said before, limited to Chrome. So if you want to grab your desktop, that's not available yet, although I've seen in the comments that they are working on a desktop version. The comments that I received for Instacap were largely positive, like this one here from Stephen Moore, saying that it looks pretty decent for 29 bucks, and hopefully they'll improve and add or fix some of the features, and they might pick it up. There's another comment here from Matt Brown who says, I can't see how this is better than CleanShot X for the same price. And Matt, I tend to agree, although we're not exactly comparing apples to apples here, whereas CleanShot X is an excellent screen capture tool for the Mac, it doesn't have any any of the commenting or feedback tools that are kind of the main feature of Instacap. But if your primary goal is simply to get beautiful looking screenshots, I think CleanShot is still far ahead of the pack. However, remember with CleanShot, you're gonna have to pay extra for that cloud storage. You can pay once for CleanShot, 29 bucks will get you the application, but you don't get the cloud sharing unless you pay a monthly fee. Instacap doesn't have any limits on its cloud sharing right now, so that makes it pretty unique. Overall, I gave Instacap a 6.5 out of 10. I think it's a strong tool, but it's not quite where I'd want it to be in order to use it every single day. Our next tool today is called translate.video, and this is an AI-powered video translation and dubbing tool. The idea here is that you upload one of your videos, and then you can also clone your own voice, and the software will do the rest in terms of translating your video from, say, English to Spanish, which is what I try to do. ¿Qué pasa, amigos? Soy Dave Swift de Clientem.com. Soy un experto en experiencia de usuario de software. Translate Video works with over 75 languages, and I thought the voice cloning process was pretty smooth, but I did have some trouble getting my files recorded in a format that it would like. That may have just been user error, but I really struggled with it throughout the video. If you watch the full-length video, you'll see what I mean. The user interface for Translate Video was pretty nice. I always was clear on what was going to happen when I clicked a button for the most part. I thought one of the highlights was the subtitle feature. There's a lot of styles built in so that when my video was ready to be exported, I could burn in some subtitles and I thought they looked really good and ready for sharing on social media. Of course, that's not universal. There was definitely some styles that were maybe not great, but there were some really nice ones in there as well. The real downside for Translate Video was the expense. In order to do your own custom voice, you needed to buy at least a tier three package on AppSumo, which is $150. And with that, you're only gonna get 10 minutes of your custom voice use per month. Now, you can still translate your videos into other languages, but it just won't mimic your actual voice. The feedback I got on the quality of the Spanish translation from Translate Video was mostly pretty good. There's a comment right here where it says, the Spanish is really good actually, and the verbiage is spot on. 
but not everybody agreed. Here's another comment that says, the translation is a bit fast and the quality of the translation is poor. Typical videos I would skip immediately for the quality. If you don't understand the other language to make a few corrections, you're gonna need an editor. So if you have to hire someone to oversee all of the dubbing because maybe the translation isn't high enough quality yet, that's definitely gonna be a huge drawback. However, if you just wanna get your content out into other languages and you're not so concerned that it's absolutely perfect, well, then that's kind of a decision you have to make. Overall, I gave Translate Video a 6.4 out of 10. That may be a low score for you if you're not concerned about the custom voice aspect. If you're okay with using their built-in voices, you'll get a lot more mileage on this deal, a lot more minutes per dollar. If you wanna know more about Translate Video, I'll link to the full-length tutorial down below in the description. Next up, we have Inboxy. This is an email warm-up tool that will help you improve your cold email deliverability. Now, there was some criticism of this tool, which I'll address at the end, but first let me talk about how it worked, and then I've also got an update for you in terms of the results. So Inboxy is a very simple tool to use. You just connect your email address that you're gonna be using for cold email, and then you go ahead and do a few simple configurations if you want to, although there is kind of a fast path button. You can just click and then you're all good to go. And what it's gonna do is gradually over time start to send out emails to their automated system that will either open the email or open the email and respond to you, or even open the email and then favorite it. So you're gonna be sending signals signals to the major email service providers that the emails that were sent are actually desirable. In fact, there's even a maintenance mode, which I thought was a really cool idea, where if you start sending out cold emails, it will keep running in the background to kind of balance things out and give you a good reputation because typically what will happen is as you start sending out cold emails, your reputation will start to tank over time and eventually you'll have to burn that domain altogether and start again fresh. Now my inboxy video ended rather abruptly. I wasn't able to use it for any period of time before I needed to post the video. So this video is gonna have an update in terms of the results. So here is my Inboxy account. I'm gonna go into it and then I can open up the current email address that is running the warm-up campaign. So this is the initial phase of the warm-up and you can see that some emails have actually been sent. Down below here, we've got a little graph. So I set up my account on the 17th. The first batch of emails went out on the 18th. It sent 10 total, which is important. We'll come back to that in a moment. Then on the 19th, it sent 23, uh, 23 total emails, and then it took the weekend off because I have it configured to only send on weekdays, and then so far today, it has sent uh, 13 more. So these are definitely on the low side of the range I asked it to send. We can check that number by going up to the gear icon, and then in step two under goals, we can see that it's set to send between 20 and 90 emails per day. So maybe you know it's only sent 13 so far today, it will get up above 20 by the end of the day. It still has four or five hours left to do that. And then maybe on this day, it just didn't fully get going because it was just set up. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. It did send 23 on Friday. Overall, I can see what it's doing. It's got a, a full log of everything that's happened here. Very, very informative. I, I like that about the user interface. I mentioned that in my full length review. But now we've got some data to check out. So we can see here that it sent 13 today. All 13 have been opened. They've all hit the inbox right away, so nothing has been unspammed. Let's check if any of the previous ones had been. No, I've consistently hit the inbox, so that's a good sign for my domain. Out of 46 total emails sent, 24 have received replies and two have been starred. Now I haven't been sending long enough to actually get an IPS rating from Google or Microsoft, but when that's available, it would be displayed here. So if you're sending cold email, I think this is a great tool. Now there's been a few comments kind of putting this tool down and I just wanna maybe give my thoughts in response to them. So there's this comment here which says, this is expensive for cold email warming and cold emailing SaaSes tend to provide this as an option. And I would say that this isn't expensive. I don't know in what world it could be considered expensive. Since it's a one-time cost, you can warm up you know, as many email addresses as you like for this one-time cost. You can only do so many at a time. But overall, I think it's a very, very reasonable cost. And not all SaaS providers of cold emailing tools will 
will allow you to warm up your, that might be an extra expense or it's just not built into the platform. So it depends on what you're doing, especially if you're using like open source tools to do the actual sending. Very rarely do they have any sort of cold warm up built in. So I think um, I tend to disagree with this. Everybody's welcome to their own opinions. Definitely drop them down below in the comments if you disagree with me. I have a hard time saying that any of these LTDs are overpriced unless they're just complete disasters. Are they a good fit for you? Not necessarily. If, you know, you want to buy tools that are going to help grow your business, not just throw your money away. But overpriced, I don't know. Probably just more of a case of, hey, you already got another solution and you don't like the one that's currently available for sale. And that's all good. And of course, I got to call out my detractors as well. We've got U of M doc here calling me a joke saying, what, what? You have no experience with this. So yeah, that's what these videos are. Generally, I do kind of first reaction setup videos going through the entire process. It doesn't mean I don't know what I'm doing. I've got a lot of experience when it comes to email marketing, email deliverability, email authentication. So yeah, don't worry about that. Just focus on the tool, decide whether or not it's good for you. If you think I'm a joke, that's great. There's lots of other YouTube channels you can click off to. Hey, if I'm not getting detractors on YouTube, I'm probably not doing something right, so I don't mind it one bit. Overall, after running Inboxy for a few days, I would say that I definitely need more time to see real results. So I'm talking weeks or months here to really truly gauge how it's doing. However, I think it sets out to accomplish what it says it's going to do. So I commend them for that. Now there is something I would love to see increased and that's the number of total emails it can send per day. On all of the plans, it's capped at 120 emails. I'd love to see that number get closer to around 500. That way it becomes a little bit more useful for email marketing, just going outside of the cold email range and just warming up a brand new account to send out email marketing to 500, 1,000, 5,000 contacts. I think it'd be a really useful tool at that point, but it doesn't seem like that's what their target demographic is. So with all of that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and give Inboxy a 6.8. Our last tool of the week is called Alfana. This is an AI-based repurposing tool that's meant for podcasters or YouTubers to transform their content into other content. So you could take a podcast episode and turn it into a blog post, or you could take, let's say, a YouTube video and then turn it into a weekly newsletter or even social media posts. In fact, it can even create other videos from your video, like maybe making shorts or clips out of your full-length content. I've tried many tools like this in the past, and I will say that Alfana executed beyond most other tools. However, I still think it falls short of being something that can just go into everybody's tool belt and that you can rely on from day to day. Throughout my full length video, I pointed out several anomalies in terms of the user experience, things that I would just like to see fixed or tweaked, but the main sticking point was the overall quality of the output. They're not using Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is right now, bar none, the gold standard for AI-based content. And I've said repeatedly on this channel that if you're going to generate AI content, you need to do so with the highest quality model. Otherwise, you're gonna end up spending a lot of time just rewriting everything the AI creates. I ended up giving Alfana a 6.6 .6 out of 10, and that actually sparked some anger from a few viewers. Like this comment here where they say, I don't understand the rating. I have used Unifier, refunded, and it was horrible. I mean horrible. Actually, there are a lot of reviews on YouTube giving Unifier barely a one star. Now Alfana gets less. I think you gave it 0.1 less than Unifier. That's incorrect. I gave Unifier a 6.2, Alfana got a 6.6. .6. In my world, that is a huge difference. Each point increment is very important. To me, difference is night and day between those two apps. Of course, there are quirks, that's for sure, but I've yet to find another LTD that does it better than Alfana on the marketplace right now. I agree with that. I don't think there's another tool that does it better that's available for an LTD. What you can do, however, is just get a Claude Pro subscription, only $20 a month, and use their projects feature. You could use a Claude project to do everything in Alfana, and you can customize it exactly as you want. Now, sure, you'd have to write a few prompts, but that's really not that big of a deal because you can just ask Claude to write the prompts for you. It comes with a prompting project 
built right in. So my opinion, your money is best spent on cloud right now. However, I'm gonna keep my mind open and continue to review AI-based LTDs. I never sugarcoat anything and I'm always giving you my honest opinion. Remember, I work for you guys, the viewers. If you stop clicking my links, the funds dry up and I can no longer make these videos. I am not here to support AppSumo or the creators on that platform. I make these videos for you and honestly for myself because I just really enjoy keeping up on all of the new software tools. With that in mind, I wanna mention that there are links to all of these deals in the description. And when you click on that and make a purchase at AppSumo for anything at AppSumo, you will be supporting this content and allowing me to make these daily videos. Thank you so much to everybody who's already doing so. There's also a link to clientamp.com in the description. That's where you can find my premium courses, get full text versions of all of these videos, or even work with my team directly. While you're there, you can also sign up for our newsletter. So this week's AppSumo deals offer a diverse range of tools for content creators, marketers, and businesses just looking to expand their reach. Now, each tool shows some promise in each area that it represents, but they all have room for improvement in terms of the UI polish and further feature refinement. As always, make sure you consider your specific needs and the limitations of each tool before making a purchase. Remember, lifetime deals can be a great value if the software aligns with what your actual long-term goals are. Don't just buy it and leave it on the shelf. Friends don't let friends buy shelfware. That's all for this week's Taco Truck Roundup. Make sure you leave me a comment down below for the algorithm. If you're new around here, make sure you like and subscribe. My name is Dave Swift. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next review.